everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and welcome to Storage Day. We're here at Amazon in Boston, and you're watching theCUBE. Wayne Dusso is here. He's the general manager of a lot of stuff, file, hybrid, edge, transfer, and data protection services at Amazon Web Services. Good to see you, Wayne, thanks. Good to see you. So let's talk about that. That's a pretty vast portfolio that you have. Explain that to our audience. Sure thing. So uh, the portfolio that uh, I'm responsible for uh, covers a vast uh, swath of our, of our storage portfolio at AWS. So in that, we cover all of our file services. Uh, so that's EFS and FSX. Our data transport services, which includes data sync, uh, transfer for SFTP, and our snowball, uh, or Snow services, and then also uh, Hybrid Edge, which includes our Snowball Compute and our Storage Gateway services, and then Data Protection, which includes AWS Backup. Wow, okay. Great, congratulations on uh, uh, on that portfolio. And you know, I said, I said earlier on, it started with S3, and it's just exploded now into all these services. This is part of what we sometimes call tongue-in-cheek Cloud 2.0. This is more workloads, more capabilities, more granularity. Um, but talk about some of the big picture macro trends that you guys see in the marketplace, specific to sort of your area. Yeah, so um, actually there's so many. Uh, it, you know, th as you said, things are expanding, things are accelerating mm -hmm. uh, in our space. Um, one of the things I like to uh, talk about with respect to our portfolio is we have uh, storage services, data transport services to match the needs of your workloads and your applications. So all of these services are purpose built for the type of storage that you need, the programming model that you need for your applications and workloads. So whether it's uh, object storage uh, with S3 and Glacier, or block storage with EBS, or most recently, file service with EFS and FSx file services. So you have the tools at your disposal uh, that you need based on your, on your application workloads. Talk more about the programming model. What mm. are, how do you envision that? What are you? What are your? Men what's your mental model of the different programming? Sure. Models? So, um, forever, uh, people have been programming based on you know whether it's performance or 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 some you know scale of some sort. Um, you know, uh, databases traditionally use block storage uh, because they don't need a lot of uh, logic between them and and the storage medium itself. Um, file storage is been used for 50 years. And it has a very specific programming model that exists in every operating system in every programming language. You know, whether it's a, an open, uh, a read, write, seek, close, it's a common paradigm uh, that is used all over the place. And uh, that capability uh, in the performance that you need to satisfy those applications and workloads is very specific. And so for, uh, for AWS, we provide those file systems for for Linux, if you would, with EFS, Windows, which is FSX for Windows, and for very high performance computing uh, on Lustre. Uh, we've had an amazing uh, storage platform, which is S3. Mm -hmm. And S3 forms the basis for a lot of our customers' data lakes uh, and basically storage data repositories, for which there are many integrations with that through our other storage services. I often joke that you know, if your expertise is, is unpacking you know, boxes, uh, plugging in, you know, setting up storage arrays, you know, managing LUNs. You, know, you, you might want to think about updating you know, your skill sets, right? But so that's the other big mega trend that we certainly see is, yeah. is people just don't see a lot of value in planning and managing and migrating over six month periods storage arrays. It's, it's, it's something that really doesn't add a lot of value to the business. So you guys have announced all these services over the years, and you've got some new announcements as well that kind of play into some of the trends that we've been talking about. Talk about the news. Yeah, so the news is pretty rich uh, at, uh, for, for this season. Um, let's, let's start off with FSX. Uh, so FSX is our service for um, bringing fully managed third party or open source file systems uh, um, uh, to our customers. Um, and so FSX, uh, Windows, as example, uh, ha was launched uh, last year at reInvent and uh, has been rolling out a whole series of features throughout the year. And we have a, a nice set of features coming out uh, this year. So as example, um, today FSX Windows is a single uh, AZ service. We are rolling out multi-AZ capability. Oh. And yeah. Okay, and, and you, know, you, you sometimes you guys make the point that 
the beauty is there's no change required in, in apps. And we talked earlier about the program model, but talk a little bit more about that. Why is that important to customers? You know, uh, and I'll, I'll index on FSX Windows uh, for, for another minute. Um, a lot of apps have been written uh, to use the semantics of a particular file system. In case of Windows, we'll say NTFS. And they're written for that specific file system. Um, we've provided uh, customers with the capability of bringing those applications to AWS uh, without any worry of compatibility. They, it's, it's a pure lift and shift model. Uh, so it makes it really easy for them to bring uh, their workloads, they should bring their workloads so they don't have to deal with some of the things you brought up earlier around provisioning, buying systems, having to worry about setting up, planning for all of that. We take all of that work away from them and they get full compatibility uh, based on what they need today and with some of the additional capabilities we're bringing to bear with the integrations in the ecosystem, the AWS ecosystem, they'll be able to appreciate those as well. Let's talk a little bit about uh, more about that because you're you're basically I'm inferring you're saying hey there's compelling reasons why you should move into the cloud for instance file services into the cloud. It, it, what's the difference between my on-prem is it just on-prem NAS stuffing it into the cloud or is it more than that? You touched on integration so Convince me, it's, why should I move? It's so much more than that. So if we if we look at uh, the basic infrastructure, um, once you literally click three or four buttons to uh, start a file system, create a file system, um, you no longer have to worry about it ever again. So the things that you would have done on-prem, um, you no longer have to worry about having a storage administrator or having to provision and buy storage and maintain it. Um, we take care of all that. We take care of all the security elements. I'm mean, so important uh, to your data. Uh, to make sure that's in a in a secure environment, security is job number one for us. Mm -hmm. So all of these capabilities, right, the ability to stand it up, to never have to manage it, never have to worry about the security, we take care of all the capabilities. Like you should really be bringing those workloads onto a platform like this, so that you can spend your time on added value um, uh, services or applications for your business. Well, and the integration is, is also a key piece of it. I mean. You know, for, for years, customers, and s customers still sometimes want to roll their own. You know, they, they like to have the, you know, the knobs and turn them, but, but many, many customers that we talk to are saying, listen, it's too expensive. I, I don't want to be a systems integrator anymore. In the cloud, how can they take advantage of those, like sometimes they call it the flywheel effect, but the other innovations that you're bringing, whether it's machine learning, or other services that you guys are bringing in. Is that, how tight is that integration? So those integrations are uh, ongoing and they're, they're forever. It goes back to what I said a minute ago around, over a three year period, all of these capabilities are going to be delivered to them, if you would, at the, at the same cost as the, the basic service. So let's talk about what happened this year. Um, a lot of our customers are using SageMaker. Mm -hmm. uh, for their ML and AI capabilities. And SageMaker is deeply integrated with both FSx Luster and uh, uh, EFS. So that customers, again, don't have to worry about storage, they don't have to worry about sharing, they don't have to worry about scaling, it's all there for them. Y you mentioned also that you're responsible for the Snow products. I am, you mentioned yeah. an edge. I always, what, it was, to me it was your first you know, move to, to to hybrid, I'll call it, but I always joke that, uh, but it's true, the fastest way to get data from point A to point B is a Chevy truck. And, and so, but you, you, you're, you're referring to it as sort of an edge play. Maybe yes. talk a little bit more about that. Help us understand it. Sure, so uh, Snowball uh, as, a, as a service uh, was launched about five years ago. Right. And we initially launched a service as a bulk data migration service. And it's, it's been that service for roughly four years. Um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, we, we started introducing um, the ability to um, have compute as part of that um, device. And the reason for that was, customers were telling us, as we're moving the data, uh, we would like to be able to do some pre-processing uh, before it makes it onto uh, AWS, before it goes into S3 as an example. So we started providing that capability. That ended up expanding into um, a full-blown, um, if you would, cloud platform uh, on a device that can be run in disconnected environments or austere environments. So with Snowball today, you have the ability to have EC2 instances, EBS storage, S3 storage, all in one device. Mm. And so that's a really powerful construct uh, because you can build your applications on AWS using the same services, prove out, if you wouldn't, DevOps model that they're what you need to be, and then literally lift them onto uh, a Snowball device and have those executing in the field as if they were running directly in the cloud. 
Changing subjects a little bit. When I look at the logo slide of all your customers, a lot of big names on there. They're mm -hmm. global companies, and you know, a lot of times people say, "Oh, I, I, I run a cloud," and they got a data center, you know, in East Boston or something. No offense if you have a data center <laughs> in East Boston, but but regions are critical, um, for, especially for global scale. I mean, cloud brings global scale, uh, but it's also important to have you know data proximate to the the, the users, so you're reducing latency. Uh, there's an availability and redundancy aspects. Talk about you know, your philosophy around regions and how it fits into your portfolio. How do you take advantage of all that capability? So a lot of our customers have global presence and the ability for them to have their application, to have their business uh, function in the regions that they're doing business and have those low latencies. Um, and also the availability model of being in, in multiple places in case of, of disasters, super important. Um, our regions are built to have at minimum three availability zones. And an availability zone you can think about as a, a data center. So for example with EFS, when you stand up a file system with EFS, your file system is automatically um, uh, distributed, replicated across all three availability zones within that region. But as the user, you don't worry about any of that. We take care of it all for you. And if in, in the unfortunate event that a, a, an availability zone is made unavailable, your data is still fine. You still have access to that data all the time. Yeah, and, and your customers are, I think, increasingly understanding this. They're beginning to architect uh, around regions and availability zones. It's a different way of, of thinking, but it's, uh, in, in some respects, sort of the, a modern way of thinking. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you go back a few years and you think about all of the disaster recovery or business continuance software mm. and capabilities that had been created, we're providing all of those capabilities uh, today in our regional construct. Yeah, well you know this. I mean, you, you, we've both been, our, been, been around for a while and we've seen the unnatural acts that you had to do to sort of create that level of redundancy and business continuance. And it was extremely expensive, complex, and, and really risky to, to test. So I'll, uh, I'll leave you with the last word. Any other thoughts that you want to share with our audience? Well, we're, we're, we're just, uh, first off, thank you for giving me the time today. Uh, we're really excited about uh, what we're doing with each of these services. Uh, we're very excited about the portfolio overall uh, and the value that it's going to bring and is bringing to our customers today. Uh, we're excited about all the announcements. And yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of innovation, expansion of the Amazon portfolio, optionality, granularity, performance, horses for courses, the right tool for the right job, Wayne. Thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. My pleasure, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, storage day from Amazon in Boston. We'll be right back.